Today I'd like to talk about failure. Failure is like being kicked in the balls. When you get kicked in the balls, you want to avoid doing whatever it is that caused that to happen, because it's painful. And failure is the same way. It's not painful physically, it's painful up here. It hurts our confidence and our ego. When you fail, you want to avoid whatever it is that caused you to fail again. And the problem with a fear of failure is that this business is all about failure. When you work at Honda or Mazda at a dealership and you're a mechanic, they give you training on how to repair the newer model vehicles so that you actually know what you're doing when you go in. With us, we're being set up to fail. Nobody from Apple is coming here and going, hey, when you have a working click on the trackpad, but, but it's not moving and you've changed the trackpad eight times, here's the resistor next to the chip that you should replace because uh, that chip is, that does the analog to digital conversion for the microphone is actually doing the analog to digital conversion for the trackpad. Nobody does that shit. You have to learn this on your own. And the best way to learn is unfortunately through failure. Failure is what we experience very often when we're working on a new device. We service at least 30 or 40 different devices. And each of these devices were devices that at the time that we were initially offering whatever service we were offering, nobody was out there telling us how to do it. It's not like learning the iPhone 4 or 4S screen where I could throw a rock out my window right now and hit somebody who has a fucking video on YouTube on how to fix an iPhone 4 or 4S. In the beginning of last year, when we started doing MacBook Air polarizers, nobody else did this shit. So we had to open it up and figure it out for ourselves. And let me tell you that regardless of how smart the technician is, the guy to open up the first MacBook Air is going to skull fuck that thing so badly that it will not even remotely resemble a computer. And I opened one and I fucked it up. And I bought another one and I opened it and I fucked it up. And you know what? I felt bad every time this happened. What it does is it brings me back to that feeling that I had when I was a new technician, when I was opening my first device ever, and I fucking failed. When you fail, oh, I don't have the right tool. So you go downstairs and you, and you buy the right tool. Then you don't, you, the part that you got, you broke. So you gotta buy another one and wait three days. Then you need this little plastic piece to put it back together, and you gotta buy it online and wait three to four days before you can even figure out if all the money that you put into this thing is gonna allow it to be resellable again. And that's a shitty feeling. Every time you gotta go downstairs to the store to buy something else to fix it, every single time you have to leave your desk because you don't have what it is you need to do this, whether it's knowledge or a part, that chips away at your confidence. That's a shitty feeling. And the problem with this business is regardless of how experienced you are, every new device is humbling. Every new thing that comes out brings you back to that feeling that you used to have in the beginning when you were this close to giving up because you fucked it up so badly. And the reason our the thing is what sets us apart from our customers is that we've already learned we don't have that feeling. You're not supposed to have that feeling. That is what sets you apart from the customers. What you need to do when you fail is simply try again. You need to erase all the all that negative talk that this is that I, I don't know how to fix this. Oh, I'm never gonna figure this out because that is self-defeating bullshit. The thing is that true confidence, not just oh I did it once and I know it, or oh I watched a guide and now I know how to do it. That's not real confidence. That's okay, let me just follow what I saw. Real confidence comes from failure. Because when you fail, and then you overcome failure, and then on the fourth or fifth or ninth try you actually get it to work, you know how to not fail. When you watch a guide, you know how to succeed. But when you fail, and then you learn from your failure, you know how to not fail again. So not only do you know what you're doing, but you also know how to not fuck it up. And knowing how to not fuck it up is a totally different confidence from just knowing how to do something. And it's a strong confidence. And it's a confidence that you cannot recreate, that you cannot pay for that you cannot be given. That's a confidence that can only be earned and it's a beautiful, beautiful feeling. I want to show you something about our store. I'm not joking when I say that all repairs get done in front of customers. This is where I sit when I work. This is where the customer sits right there. That's two fucking feet away. And the reason I'm confident in letting a customer sit two feet away from me when I'm replacing a chip on their motherboard, two feet away from me when we're replacing a polarizer on their MacBook Air, which is just a, just a fuck shit repair, is because we know what the fuck we're doing. And we know what the fuck we're doing in a different way than somebody who was just taught how to do it. We know how to do it because we learned from failure. We know what the fuck we're doing because our knowledge came from failure. Our confidence came from failure. And that is a truly unique breed of confidence and knowledge that doesn't come naturally. That doesn't come from somebody just giving it to you or telling you how to do something. And it's important to have this. Because let me tell you something. Arrogance and timidness are both getting in the way of learning new devices. If you're kind of timid, you go, oh, 
Well, we replaced the iPad Mini digitizer the first time and it worked, but they came back because it was non-responsive. And we did the second one and the LCD didn't come on afterwards, so we decided, oh, we're just not going to do that anymore. I'm going to eat your lunch. Or the guy that goes, that device is a piece of shit. I don't work on that device because that's a piece of shit. I'm going to eat your fucking lunch. Let me tell you something. People like me are predators against technicians like this. People at this shop are predators against technicians like this. If I throw a rock outside right now, I'm probably going to hit somebody who's posted a guide at one point on how to fix your iPhone 4 or 4S. When it comes to simpler repairs, you may not have to feel like an idiot as often because you can just go online and find 50 million guides on how to do it. But in the beginning of last year when the MacBook Air Polarizer came out, nobody was telling us how to do this shit. When I'm making a video on which component to put back on your motherboard so it works again, when I'm making a video on putting a wire from here to over here so that your motherboard works again, there are no videos and guides on how to do that shit. This is not like a Mazda or a Honda dealership where the technician gets training from Honda on how to perform maintenance on the newer model cars. It's not like that. We have to open devices that nobody wants us to open. The entire point of our industry is out of warranty repair on devices that nobody from the company gives a fuck about training us on how to repair. So we have to figure it out for ourselves. We have to open it up and figure it out for ourselves. And every single time something new comes out, every time a new generation comes out that is seriously different from the last, we're brought back to that point of vulnerability. We're brought back to that point where we don't know what the fuck we're doing and it brings us back to a feeling that we don't really like having. And I need you to resist that feeling as much as you can. I need you to resist that feeling to say, I don't want to work on this because I'm scared of it. Or, I, you know, I'm too good for that device. That device is a piece of shit. I can tell you that a technician that I used to learn from, who made $600 a day every day, who drove a fucking Lamborghini, is now broke for one reason. He thought all surface mount devices were a piece of shit. He didn't want to learn how to work on surface mount devices. And this, may, this seems silly. It really does in 2013. It seems completely fucking ridiculous that somebody would not want to work on a surface mount device, on any sort of surface mount soldering. But he really didn't. And you may think, wow, that guy's an idiot. What kind of technician is he? He was one of three people that I know in New York City that could replace one particular switch on one particular kind of console without fucking it up. And to make it better, he could do each one of these switches in 90 seconds. It takes other technicians three to five hours. He was very, very good at what he did. And now he's broke because he didn't adapt with the times. And there are a lot of people out there that are just like this right now. Right now, we charge $200 to $350 to replace polarizers on these MacBook Airs. Part cost is $30 to $70. Bucks. This is a good margin. And the reason that this margin is so high is because absolutely nobody wants to do it. And yes, I will prey on these people and I will eat them for lunch here at this shop because we do things that other people don't want to do. We do liquid damage repairs that other people don't want to do. When the toothbrush on the ultrasonic has failed, we will continue working. When this, uh, they come out with a computer where they've glued all the fucking layers of the screen together, we will get it working again because we're not afraid to fail. I will open a device three, five, seven times. I'll buy three or five of something to figure it out. And I know how f the feeling sucks. I know what it feels like to be there sitting there at one in the morning after spending two or three hours on something only to realize that you fucked it up beyond recognition, beyond something you could ever resell on eBay to try to make some of your money back, beyond ever being able to give it to somebody else who knows what they're doing and have them fix it. And I know how it sucks to go on Google to find even one other motherfucker that tried to do what it is you did and realize that there's nobody out there that even tried. That does suck, and that does suck to fail. But you can't get to the point where you won't work on a device or you won't try to learn again just because you had that feeling of failure happen a couple of times. There is nobody right now within 10 miles of this store that does MacBook Air polarizer replacement, which is why we're able to charge $225 to $350 for something where a part cost is $38 to $70 because nobody else wants to do it. And people will come in and go, oh, the last time I did that, the screen didn't come on afterwards. You shouldn't be doing that. They're not telling me what I should be doing. They're reciting to me their story of personal failure, and they're trying to make their story of personal failure mine. Fuck that shit. I'm going to eat that technician for lunch and enjoy the profit margin. The Iron Sheik is a saying that he uses on other wrestlers, like Hulk Hogan, which is, I'm going to break his back, fuck his ass, and make it humble. And that's the mentality that I want you to take on for every new device repair. That's what I want you to think about every time a new device comes in the door. Don't think about, oh, how am I going to do this? Oh, I don't want to feel like I did when I first fixed something again and know what I'm doing. Oh, I don't know. Uh, oh, crap, I think I broke it. No, I want you to break its back, 
fuck its ass, and make it humble. Old country way. That's what Iron Sheik would do. And he's the legend. Now, this doesn't just apply to the small device repair. This applies to other aspects of business. If I could live to be 300 years old right now, and put, take all those failures and pile them, it would be probably this many. If I could take all the failures and all the bad decisions I've made over the past four to five years and put them in a pile, it would probably be this big. If I gave up on life because of failure, if I gave up my business and myself because I failed over and over and over again and I just kept making the same, the same bad decisions over and over again, I'd be done for. I wouldn't have a store to videotape this in and show you guys right now. I wouldn't have a staff of intelligent, kind, and respectful people that I'm very proud of. I wouldn't have any of what I had because I would have given up. When you fail, you simply just gotta forget about it. Fuck what I could have done differently. Fuck, oh, if only I had tried this before. If only I had known this before. If you think like that, it's poisonous. And if I thought like that, if I thought, if only I had done X in 2010, if only I had done Y in 2011, I would have jumped off a bridge right now. I'm serious. I go down that line of thought of, if I had done this, all of these things would have been better, I would kill myself. And I, I don't see how anybody else wouldn't if that's what they loop through their mind over and over again about how much better their life could be if they had done something else. That's a poisonous mindset, and you need to get yourself out of it. Don't think about that. Think about it this way. Well, if I hadn't failed, I wouldn't have had to hire this person. And if I had never hired this person, they would have never led me to this mindset. And if I was never led to this mindset, I wouldn't be making all this more money. If I didn't fail while fixing this device, I would have never learned it. If I had never learned it, well, it sucks that I had to pay 500 to replace it right now, but I wouldn't be making $200 every time I fixed it, and I fixed it 100 times. Look at the good things that come from failure. Always try to make a map in your mind to the good things that came from failure. If whatever failures that you've encountered in life are not bad enough that you're sitting here with the luxury of watching a video on an internet connection on a computer, you know what? Life ain't that bad.